Okay, this is day two. I'm just going to sit down um, of my grief painting. So, the first one I did um, a series of circles uh, emanating from the center outwards. Today, I'm going to do a lotus flower and I'm going to do the petals getting paler as they go out to the outside. It's a rhythmic image again, so it's a, a matter of building up very slowly the colours that you want to use. I'm going to use um, a little bit of alizarin crimson, which if you water it down becomes a very sort of pinky colour but I've also got some what is called rose madder which is border, bordering on sort of cerise in tone um, it's a lovely colour actually and again if thinned down will create these lovely textures but first of all I'm just going to put a flame in the centre and I'm going to use a little bit of it's it's gamboge yellow and it's like a golden yellow for the centre and this is going to represent the main sort of harsh nature of grief and the way it keeps sort of flaring up on you. Again, I'm not an expert at this. I've just been reading a little bit about it and also been asking friends and family what their experiences have been. And a lot of people have said that what happens is that it's sort of even if you know you lost somebody or something might be a pet um, or a relative or whatever um, and it could be years on but it still comes up and bites you without you knowing um, you think you've sort of got over something and um, it comes back and bites you and sort of almost reminds you of what's been going on. So that's the central flame of the grief. That's how I like to put it anyway. And I'm just going to avoid these petals for now because I don't want that to bleed into the rest of the work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the very pale parts which are the outer leaves and I'm just going to start to fill them in slowly and with each one I'm going to think of those stages that I mentioned in the first tutorial about the anger and the frustration of what has been happening to you or to me. And each petal, as the colour wears off your brush, should become paler unless you reload it and you can pick up colour from the already laid down colour and move it around so that you have pale petals in different areas on your painting. And th this is a lotus flower that we're doing here. And a lotus flower represents peace in a lot of religions, but also just generally, 
you find a lotus flower on the water in the May and it opens up very gently and very slowly to reveal this beautiful flower. So I've started to use a little bit more of the darker pigment um, but I'm going to be quite careful because I don't want too much like that. Can you see how that happened then? So that to me is like the grief overrunning. <laughs> It's bleeding into other areas of your life, which you don't think that it's going to do that, but it does. Not only did I lose my mother, but I lost my dog within a week. And as a consequence, I haven't been able to um, sort of think about my dog, really. And the thing about my dog is that he was in my life for sort of 12 years and I wasn't able to sort of think about him because of my mother dying as well but what has happened is that the sort of the both of the grief situations have sort of blended into one so I can't really distinguish between the two. <laughs> I can't grieve for one and not the other. And, you know, there's, there's, it's very complex. Sometimes I don't know who I'm crying for. And so they've almost become one full-on grief session. So here we go. I'm going to start building up the darker tones a bit now. I'm going to start putting a few bits of darker areas just down in the bottoms of these petals. Spread them into the damp areas so that they give some depth. Uh, I think that petal goes in there, doesn't it? Yeah. That's quite dark, so just pick up a little bit of water and just spread a little bit more like that. Or what you can do is you can um, hair dry the petals in between application. So slowly build up those leaves and think about all of the issues that you're experiencing. This style of painting where it's just almost like filling in really is quite meditative and mindful. So repeat exercise. Repeat exercises are very good for this sort of experience. I find it quite calming. I mean, I, f I find painting calming anyway. I mean, in one on one hand, it helps me to um, forget about what's happening and then on the other hand it helps me to focus on important parts of the path that I'm experiencing at the moment it also stops my head from hurting because I'm not thinking about other things, I'm just thinking about this process. So it's helping me focus a little. And what I'm quite enjoying about this is the fact that I'm not drying it off in between actually. 
and I'm, I'm allowing areas to run out of control like this area here that bled into there you know allow that to happen not it doesn't have to be about I mean the problem with watercolor is it, it is about control and often people get frustrated that they can't be loose with it but if you just allow things to happen if you're not sort of thinking right this has got to be a finished picture I've got to frame it and put it on my wall that sort of thought then you can just allow whatever happens to happen if one color bleeds into another that's fine if another color is stronger than another like now now you can see look how much of an impact that's had just allow it it's almost with watercolor it's lovely to have these accidents every now and again and with grief I've been advised that you've just got to let it happen and try not to control it too much try just to let each stage progress through to the next one without thinking you've got to solve it or fix it or whatever so you can see that this here has gone all over the place but you can smooth it out quite easily like that so if there are areas that you think oh no 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 that that is out of control but it's not working and see if there's something you can do about it and just putting water back in like that will help to solve that issue if you wanted to if you wanted to solve it that is right, let's put some more of that strong I like that strong pigment I'm going to put a little bit more here and in here just to separate that petal from that one and I put it in here and in here just take a little bit of water on your brush and just spread so it doesn't form a hard line like that maybe put a touch in there a touch in there so you're building up these tones in between so that the, the petals are separate Use your water to blend. In there. Okay, I'm going to leave that. Oh, maybe I'll just put a little bit here because that's a bit flat, that one. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'm going to think about the water. So you do the same in the water. I'm just going to put a little bit of blue and green in the water. I'm not going to make too much of it because I want the um, the flower to separate itself from the water. But I'm just going to go around the edges quite roughly like this. And I'm going to also use some leaves and some li well, water lily type leaves, the lotus leaves, but in the water too, just to separate things out a little and it can be again really rough doesn't have to be perfect and these are the lotus pads when i was in, in india a few years ago i went to the lotus temple in Delhi and it was the most amazing space um, because it's for all religions to practice in so it's not just one religion it's for all religions so there was all sorts going on as we entered there was many different services going on around us it was so lovely right okay 
going to leave that there for the moment. I'm going to go back to my reds and pinks. So to make it look like it's in the water, all you need to do is add a bit of blue to your colour. So I've just added a little bit of blue to the red, the rose madder and the alizarin crimson that I was using before. So just build up those petals in the same way as we did before. Just build them up quite loosely because they are in the water this time. So they don't need to be and if it bleeds like it's done there, don't worry, that's a nice accident. Like I said, with watercolour, you get these lovely accidents happening. And, you know, it may be intentional. It may not be. But just let it go. Let's just let it happen. And there we have our... Oh, one there. So in the same way, if you just pick up a little bit of the rose madder, add it into the purple, thin it down a bit because it's in the water. I'm just going to let some of that rose madder colour come in to these petals like that underneath there. We're just going to make it really, really loose in here. There wouldn't be that much definition in the water that you would notice. And also what you can do is you can go back later and just add in some definition if you feel you need it. Okay, but I'm quite happy with that. I quite like the looseness of it. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit of that green-blue colour. Now it's dried off up here. I'm just going to go in and put some... Just a little suggestions of water up here. Not too much, because again, I don't want the flower to be, oops, taken out. Okay, let it dry. And then what you can do is you can go back in. I'm gonna take a bit of this rose madder colour again. I'm just going to put some definition in here. So in there, in there. Look at the image and bring out and define the bits that you want to define. So there's quite a lot of definition down in this lower area but not a lot on the top section in here Just a little bit here and there, not much. Soften it with water if you need to. Soften it. Like that. There. Let's put a little bit of that colour down the bottom as well, I think. Just to bring out a couple of those petals like that. Just going to go back in and put some orange in the center. To remind me of where this has all come from. 
so I already feel quite a bit calmer. Just going to put a little bit of that blue colour underneath these leaves, these petals here, because I want a little bit more definition just around those edges. Like that. And again, I'm just going to soften those up. So that's given me a little bit of time just to reflect on what's happened in the last day or so since I did the first painting. And it seemed to go down very well. I had lots of lovely comments. Thank you, everybody, for all of your support. And I'm hoping that a few more of these I'm so lucky to be able to have this ability to create, be creative and to be able to sort of express myself in some way visually. A lot of people write things down, but I choose to paint it out. And the nice thing about this is that it's a little record of the experience. Okay, let's just put a little bit of, I've got a um, cerulean blue here. I'm just going to put a little bit up, up there like this. I'm sorry about the racket in the background but I've got noisy neighbours. Okay I think I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to let it dry and I might come back and tweak it a little bit but that's been 22 minutes. I can feel my shoulders relaxing. It's a bit more focused. I can feel calm in my head. So that has been a really nice enjoyable thing to do. I hope it helps you even if you're not grieving for somebody or if you're not you've not had any loss but you're suffering in some way whether you're um, suffering from anxiety or depression. I hope this helps a little bit. Okay see you next time. Bye for now.